Hello there, I'm Woodsman Drew here at Lost Creek Nature Retreat. Today I'm going to talk about one of the many fungi here at Lost Creek. Uh, the one we're looking for today can be found in a mixed hardwood forest with birch trees as the, uh, the species that they exclusively grow on. And uh, we happen to have a nice winter day here because the optimum time to harvest chaga would be late fall in early winter when the water, the sap and the water are out of the tree and it's at its highest uh, mineral content. So over here we have a good example of this subject fungus that we're looking for today. And you notice this burnt looking chunk hanging on the tree here. Well that's called chaga. I love the name chaga. It's even fun to say chaga. And um, the scientific name is Inonotus obliquus. Even that name is you can make fun with. If you're ever out in the woods with someone and you run across one of these things and they say, I wonder what that is, you can say, I know notice. <laughs> Who does know? <laughs> right. Well, it's good to have a good straight woman with you. So um, if we look at this, we can see that it looks like burnt wood. And uh, that's because it's, it's loaded with melanin. Um, it's an antioxidant, which has uh, some good properties, medicinal properties. Um, could be, they say that there's some promising studies done with uh, anti-cancer. And uh, some of the other minerals, there's, there's loaded with minerals and nutrients and enzymes. And it can uh, help with uh, high blood sugar and diabetes. And um, like I already mentioned, it's anti-cancer. Uh, and um, low cholesterol, it helps with cholesterol. But I will warn you, if you're already on any medications for these type of uh, conditions, you would want to talk to your doctor before taking chaga because it could affect your medication. So this particular one is a virgin and uh, I'm not going to harvest it because it's pretty and I want to leave it for demonstrations here at Lost Creek. But if you did want to harvest this, um, you, can, uh, you can use a knife uh, to pry it off. If it's extremely stubborn, uh, it's a good idea to bring with you a, uh, a hatchet. I like to use a hatchet and a hammer, and you would get back in here and strike and remove it. I'm not going to do this one, though. We'll find another one to demonstrate for the video. But it's not quite as pretty. So now that we talked about what it is, let's talk about why it's here. And uh, it always grows on a birch tree and finds its way into a wound, uh, a branch stub, or a gash from some accident and that tree is opened up and allows the chaga spores to get into the tree and um, start to grow. Now there's two schools of thoughts on um, whether this is a symbiotic relationship or a parasitic relationship. So I'm going to talk about both schools of thought and you can decide which one you like best. Um, the first one I was going to go over is the, um, you can use the parasitic relationship. Um, the, the fungus grows on the tree, it taps into the sapwood, it, it obtains its sustenance from the tree and it grows without doing any beneficial uh, function to the tree. If, as a matter of fact, uh, it will eventually kill the tree if it goes into the heartwood and penetrates too far. So that kind of sounds parasitic. But if you look at the other side of the coin, um, the fungus taps into the sapwood and takes nutrients and stores them. And um, if the tree later on becomes deprived of those nutrients, it could go the other direction. 
uh, nature, everything in nature has a balance. It's osmosis would say if the higher nutrients were in the chaga and the tree was low on nutrients, it would actually tap out of the, the chaga and gain sustenance from the chaga. So in that way, they are a symbiotic relationship. It also forms on wounds, so it's kind of like a giant scab that heals the tree. So that's beneficial to the tree as well. Now what you're seeing here on chaga isn't, the, isn't a, a standard mushroom flower like on a lot of our other fungus that we have. This is actually uh, called mycelium, which is the, the, the fibers that gather the nutrients for the, the fungus itself. If this thing ever flowered, it would actually happen under the bark and you wouldn't see it unless you remove the bark during that one time that it's in the flowering mode. So let's talk a little bit about um, how fungus um, get their nutrition and uh, survive, like particularly the systems that are in the ground. If you've ever dug up dirt in your garden and you see white fibers or filaments, um, that's the mycelium, mycelium that I'm talking about. And that is actually the fungus and its way of gathering nutrition from the soil. They actually, some people even go into the theory that the fungus touch each other under the ground and they can transfer nutrients and share nutrients from one to the other and it's a network under there in the ground. And when they want to flower and reproduce, they send up the mushroom head, which produces spores for reproduction. So most of the stuff's going on under the ground. Some people even say that one tree can get the nutrients, send it down into its roots, which is attached to the mycelium, and the mycelium form a network, and a neighboring tree could actually be helped out by this tree. If it was sick or having troubles finding its own nutrition, this tree could actually supply that tree. So we're going into a, even a more um, complex network. So knowing that, and this being the mycelium, that uh, tells you that it could actually absorb from the atmosphere. This is actually the mycelium part of the fungus. And uh, because of that, you don't want to harvest these near uh, any type of toxicity, like a, a highway with uh, a lot of automobile traffic on it, or a factory with air pollution, because it can absorb those toxins from the atmosphere and, and, and they will build up in there. And then obviously, if you use this to make tea, um, you'll get those toxins. So don't harvest them near any, any uh, civilization. So as we said, there, this grows exclusively on the birch tree. And there is one look-alike, the uh, black knot fungus. And it's very similar on color and texture on the outside. But uh, after we remove this, we will be able to tell whether it's a black knot fungus. Now the black knot fungus only does, doesn't grow on birch, so you're pretty safe if you only harvest the chaga on a birch tree. Okay, we found another birch with some chaga on it. Looks like at one point this was a, a double tree here and this section didn't make it. So it left an opening and the chaga has taken hold here. Uh, this particular growth, I, I would estimate, it's been here quite a while. It's slow growing, seven, ten years maybe. And uh, we've got some nice clumps here. We got one sticking right out over there. That's a very nice piece, and another one hanging out over here. A little one growing here, and another one down here. So uh, I think I'm going to take this little piece right here. It looks like it might come off fairly easy and then I want to leave at least a third. I'm going to leave more than a third, but this is uh, just demonstration for you. So if you got a nice sturdy knife, you can try to get in here and pry that off. Depending on how well it's attached, this one looks like it's on there pretty good. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the uh, hatchet and the uh, hammer method. So we get right in here, hatch it, a little bit right there, a little bit down from here. That looks like she's loosened up. Nice. There we go. We've got a nice little piece of chaga right there, and I did not get into the tree. 
no damage there and looks like we got plenty left over for future harvesting you can see the golden inside there which tells you that it is chaga and not uh, black knot fungus once you get it off there is uh, the color inside uh, I'm not going to cut this one off here because I want to keep it for future but uh, here's some chaga that we have harvested previously and if you look in here you can see this wonderful golden color there's the black on the outside so that tells you that you've got real chaga and not black knot fungus so that uh, concludes the, the talk on the chaga fungus thanks for watching